So we're going to have to figure out how to use it. Um, here is its user's guide. And there's actually a, an immense amount of good information in here. This was developed by Rob Colwell, a uh, really fabulous guy who, who's put a lot of neat fundamental ideas out in the literature. Um, so there's a lot of neat stuff in here with, um, with kind of introducing these, these ideas to you. And all we're going to talk about here is the diversity part. There's also a, another set of questions and indices as far as calculating turnover. Essentially, how many species are different from this sample to that sample, given the completeness of each. Um, so one of the critical things is preparing a data input file. And so right away you have two choices, individual-based versus sample-based. So individual-based is if each element in your, in your sampling is a single individual. Most of the time we're going to be dealing with sample-based data, okay, which is to say most of the time you're not going to be sampling individuals one unit of effort at a time. You might. But let's talk about this. Within the sample-based data sets, there are two options, and we're only going to use one of them. You have this possibility of batch input, which is if you had lots and lots and lots of analyses to do, we're not going to do that. We just want this sample-based incidence or abundance data, one set of re replicated sampling units. So one presence-absence matrix, OK? Um, and so the easiest way to deal with these things, I'm really bad about like reading instructions. So I always end up just going to the sample data sets. So multiple individual based example. Well, that's individual sample based. And I think it's this one. Okay, so that's that's what the data set looks like. There's clearly some some headers up here, and then we have a matrix that looks like species along the left and samples along the top, and the matrix in the middle. Okay, let's go back to this, and it tells us about that. Format it would be nice if it fit on the screen. There we go. So let's see, default file type. Two header rows required are the title record, which has the data file title. It then has this thing in, in stars at the top, sample set. And then it has some blanks, OK? And then we have the parameter record. And that just has to tell us two control parameters, the number of species down the, down the number of rows in the data set, and the number of columns. So that's basically saying, in each of this number of rows, read out and get that many records. And then from the third line on, it's the input file. So it's, it's the, the matrix. So we now know, sorry, that wrapped a little bit. There we go. I've got some information on my sample. And then I've got 44 and 12. So 44 species and 12 samples. OK? So it's pretty easy to, to replicate that for your data set. And that's exactly what I did with this data set. What I did was I took, you remember those, those country data sets that I sent you all? Uh, I grabbed Kenya just for fun. South Africa was too big. Kenya had a nice amount of, of data. I'll show you some examples of, of the Kenyan data set on Wednesday. 
But I figured, okay, let's take the best sampled part of Kenya, which is right around Nairobi. And so I took um, all records falling within 100 kilometers of Nairobi. Now right away you should say, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's some habitat diversity in there that's not a good local diversity sample. You're right. I'm guilty as charged. Okay, but this is just an example. So then what I did was I took those data sets and I knew there was day-to-day -day heterogeneity. And so I lumped all those data into decades. So that's what you're seeing across the top. The 1880s, the 1890s, all the way up to the after 2010. Okay? And then down the, the side are all the species. And so right away you can see I have 14 decades in my sample. And I have 593 species. So there should be 593 lines going down into this data set. And without a doubt, there's going to be some garbage in there. Without a doubt. I'll tell you about that later. Um, but what it comes down to is, you know, here's a species that was first detected in late 20th century and then detected fairly consistently. There'll be other species where there, there are fewer records. But my question is, am I done? Okay, how, how complete is this data set? So once you get the format of the data set, it's pretty easy. Um, it'll take maybe a little bit of playing just to, to get your data set right on. But it's just a matter of following instructions. So now in estimate X, S, I'm going to go to load data input file. It asks what kind of data do you have? And here's that same di distinction, sample based versus individual based. I have, I'm sample based. And then within sample based, is it one data set, or kind of one study? or a lot of studies that I want to analyze in parallel. It's just one. It's just Nairobi from the 1880s to present. So I do that. I take my example data set, which I think is this one. And it says title, decadal resolution, bird sampling within 10, 100 kilometers of Nairobi. That's what I had in the, in the header. 593 species, 14 samples. And then it's telling me about what its defaults are as far as the analyses that it'll do. But the important thing is it imported my data. If I had some problem with the format, like maybe I only had 13 columns instead of 14, or maybe it's, lo it's looking for the 593rd species and it doesn't find it, it's gonna tell me at this stage. But really what you'll need to do is develop your own data set. And so you just open Notepad or TextEdit or whatever, and you follow those instructions. It's this, then this, then this, then this, and it shouldn't go wrong, but we'll fix that. So I'm gonna take the default format because that's how I set up my um, data set. And it says successfully loaded. Okay, now, again, I'm not going to go on into the shared species indices. I want to look at diversity. So diversity settings. There's a couple details that I didn't tell you about. To generate those error bars, what we did was resample many, many times from the original data set. And so that's what this is talking about with 100 runs, that's 100 random resamplings from the original data set. You can switch that off with this, with this box, but I don't recommend it. Um, you can use your, uh, you can use extrapolation and rarefaction curves. Uh, don't normally do that. Um, and the question is, is how, um, 
frequently along the curve of sampling do you estimate? Here are the estimators and indices. And so for example, I can use the classic formula, which is that for Chow 1 and 2. Or do you remember there was that n minus 1 over n? That's a, that's a, a bias corrected formula. Makes more sense to use the bias corrected formula. You remember for ice, I told you that it was referring to the infrequent, the rare species. We have to define what is a rare species. And so maybe 10 detections out of the 14, is that rare? Or is it two detections? Whatever. You're going to have to give it some number that is essentially defining a rare species. Okay? And then you can randomize uh, individuals without or with replacement. I'm just going to leave it on, on default. And I'm going to, I don't know what these other options are, nothing that's really critical. So we're just going to hit OK. I guess let's hit Compute. And it asks if it's OK to go forward. Oops. Isn't it wonderful when it's worked many times <laughs> perfectly? That's right. So I'm not sure what it's doing, but I did come prepared and I have the output. So I'm going to show you that and then we'll fix the data files and fix the problems. Okay, here is the results. No, that's not the results. That's you guys. Okay, so essentially what it does, let me get rid of these because that was experimental. Okay, you remember I had 14 samples. And so what it's doing is it's resampling samples of size one, of size two, and so, far, so forth out to um, 14. On average, we can use this. This is on average from those size one samples, we get a richness of 234 species. And you can see that that's essentially SOBS, observed. You can see as we get more and more samples, eventually we get out to the full 593 that were in the sample. Okay? But also you can see that it's still coming up even between 13 and 14 samples. Okay? So then, on average, we have a lot of singletons which is to say, on average, when we have a sample of size one, everything's a singleton. So it has to be, the number of singletons has to be equal to the number of species. Size two, now we're getting a, essentially a view of the overlap between the first and the second sample, on average. And you can see that that number of singletons goes down. Have more and more data, more and more, in this case, decades, in which to detect the same species two times. As soon as the second record comes in for a species, it stops being a singleton. And you can see immediately that as a species is detected the first time, it's a singleton, and it contributes very powerfully to increasing our estimate. But when a species is, is detected the second time, it essentially moves down to this category and starts 
reducing that additional factor. Of course, when it gets detected the third time, it no longer participates. Okay, and that, that kind of entry and exit of species from this calculation does cause it to be a little bit uh, jumpy. But there are our singletons, and then there are our doubletons, okay? Which is to say those are the species, that's F2, the species that have now been detected twice. And so you can see that number is initially low, gets higher, and then starts to decline. And that's essentially as each species is detected a third time. So that's bringing the doubletons down, okay? And so from that, you can then, I'm gonna to go to the simple indices first. Here is Chow Tu, right uh, there. And so you can see its initial value is kind of artifactual because everything is a, is a singleton, so ignore that one. But then it starts from very high because everything or lots of things are sing singletons, and it starts to come down. And in fact, it actually comes down a little too far and comes back up, okay? Um, we can look at the ices. Again, at very low values, it's too high. And it comes down and settles on that value. So essentially what Estimate S is doing is just giving you all of these indicators. They're pretty cheap to calculate. It did 100 replicates. It averaged them all and it took what a few, well, when it worked it took uh, 10, 15 seconds. Okay? So just to show you that graphically, here is my observed species accumulation that is averaged over a hundred resamplings of these different size samples. And then here's the estimate. And so you see really broad uh, error bars when you have really small sample sizes and those error bars come narrower and narrower. And you can also see our completeness index. Here, this is zero, this is 600. 420, so we're about 70% complete. Five-sixths, we're gonna be 80-something percent complete. And up here, we're, we're above 90, 95%. Okay, so a stopping rule might have us sample out to here or something like that and stop because we've achieved some level of quality. Okay? So all of that came from analysis of that one data set. Here are a couple different indicators, Chow Tu and ICE. There's one thing that's kind of interesting about this is notice that ICE is collapsing down and actually the, two, the observed and the predicted are converging on one another. Chow, actually kind of bad behavior, is increasing along with our increasing knowledge. So that's the sort of thing that I would look at and say, I don't like that. With more and more knowledge, we should converge on a truth. But here's what's happening. I think Chow is probably being too sensitive to individual singletons that are popping in. Okay, remember, it's crummy data. On Wednesday, I'm gonna show you just how crummy it is. Really, really, really crummy. Okay, um, remember there's some taxonomic garbage in there. So don't get hung up on the quality of this one inventory. Rather, pay close attention to the idea. And that is simply that you can see our observed coming up. You can see our predicted converging in on it. You can see how your stopping rules might work. That's all I'm after here. <laughs>